Hey YouTubers, what's up? I am back with the review of Mini Ninjas on the Xbox 360. Now, for anyone who follows developer paths or anything, this game is made by Eidos, or Eidos, however you want to say it. The people who made Kane and Lynch. So, that's probably anybody who's played that game. That's a huge turnoff for you, I'm sure, because that was a terrible, terrible, terrible game. Now, Mini Ninjas... I'm going to start off and just go ahead and say it instead of teasing about it. It is a totally different story. Speaking of story, haha, <laughs> do you like that? The story starts off with some heavily, heavily art-based storytelling of how there's this evil samurai warlord who's turning all the cute and furry animals of the forest into brainless fighters. The good ninjas have been sending their best out to find and fight this warlord, but none have returned. You play as Hero, which I thought was kind of funny how much it sounds like Hero but instead it's spelled H-I-R-O, which, you know, I don't know, thought it was kind of funny, kind of cool. Anyway, you have to set out to find the other five lost ninja, or ninja, whatever the plural would be, and take down this evil warlord samurai guy who I thought looked just like Yoda with this silhouette, and that's kind of a funny little thing. Anyway, you have to restore the balance of nature. I was totally surprised by how well thought out this story in Mini Ninjas was, because... It has plenty of underlying message, kind of nature-related Japanese, huge Jap Japanese flair to it. Along with just a reason for you to be fighting a ton of identical guys without thinking, man, just so happy to look all the same. Speaking of looks, let's go to graphics. Man, I'm getting gay. So I guess, um, you need to fight about four enemies throughout the entire game. I don't mean total, but I mean four different enemies, or... Um, that's not counting bosses, but it definitely can make things a little repetitive, even though they have that cool story. But having five ninjas to choose from to do said fighting and special moves for each of them and all that helps a lot. Still, more enemies would have been nice. Now, the huge, huge good, the art style. Mini Ninjas is bursting at the seams with charm, and you will not be able to stop yourself from smiling at certain parts of the game. And just stopping and being like, wow, that's, that's beautiful, that's awesome. I just felt touched. And then you go back to killing dudes, but anyway... Yeah, I know it sounds gay, but just play the game, you'll see what I mean. There were several points in the game where I just literally stopped and just stared at the surroundings, and the painted look of the horizon is just amazing. And the ninjas themselves actually all have a very original look to them. So as long as you can appreciate something that's not drawn to look too realistic, you definitely won't be disappointed in the graphics. So on to sound. Are you going to be disappointed in that? I don't know. Let's see. The sound in Mini Ninjas plays a huge role in the game's charm. Ninjas constantly rattle off hilarious dialogue, and when you kill an enemy, it simply makes a boop sound that turns the little dude that you just killed back into the forest creature that he was before. It all just comes together really nicely when it's all in motion. A few more lines of dialogue would have been great, but just as, you know, more enemies would have been, but what is there is definitely, definitely quality stuff. And, um, the, like, the spells, it's worth noting that the spells that you get throughout the game, all actually they used real Japanese words for them. And it's just kind of cool. Um, anyway, gameplay. Now, here's the big make or break part. You have spells and you have ninjas. You select spells through a wheel brought up by pressing the right bumper, and then select your ninjas through a wheel brought up by pressing the left bumper. The spell wheel works fine, but the fault comes in the ninja wheel. If you press it, you swap your ninjas no matter what, you will switch ninjas, even if you just bump it. So you're likely to do as I did throughout the heat of combat and accidentally hit that bumper instead of the spell, spell wheel bumper when you're aiming for the spell bumper and then switch to a ninja that you don't want and then have to hit it again to switch back to the ninja that you were using or were really wanting to use or whatever. Then hit your spell wheel to go back to the spell that you was aiming for originally. It just gets a little bit annoying and it could have been fixed by simply having all the ninjas on the outside of the wheel instead of having hero be in the center so that it automatically bounces the one, just have the center be the dead zone and say, no, I don't want to, cancel out, or something like that. Um, definitely not game-breaking, just annoying. The good stuff, though, is that the game is definitely really deep for a cartoon, action-y, adventure, platformer-esque game. There's even fishing and item creation through plants that you find throughout the world, and there's, like, a cool way to see them better as you use a spell to transform into an animal and it makes it where they show up even brighter than before it's just really neat a lot of little tweaks like that like i said just very japanese feel of the game it's very cool 
There are also hidden statues and caged animals uh, to find with some really hefty achievements behind them. I believe it's 100 points for finding, you know, all of each individual. Um, for all of you completionists out there, they're well hidden, but not so much that it's retarded. And the fighting itself also works very great. You have special attacks for each ninja, and they all serve different purposes. Heroes can seem a little bit cheap at first, but then you'll realize that you're going to be fighting like 30 and 40 dude mobs at one point, and it's almost necessary at that point, and it's just really cool to use. You just like whip between dudes, and you're like, blah, 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 nah, 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 nah. Yeah, that was a bad impression of Japanese. But anyway, multiplayer. This was a pretty big disappointment for me, considering there are different characters setting it up perfectly for a fun co-op experience. It's just not there. There's just no multiplayer. Competitive multiplayer would have felt just tacked on stupid, and I would have probably even rated the game worse had it get, had that. I know that sounds weird, but it would have made it seem so generic if they just stuck that on there. But co-op definitely would have fit perfectly. And either way, it's still a great game. If you liked Ratchet and Clank, Spyro, that sort of thing, this is definitely, definitely something you should check out. It clocks in at just about six to eight hours, depending on your difficulty you set it on. So it's perfect, perfect for a rental. If you're into item collection, I would even recommend to buy, just not at full price. If you're not into item collection, but like the style of game that it is, you should definitely rent this. It is a high, high quality action adventure game. It's a blast for a single playthrough. I was hooked from start to finish, and odds are you're going to be too. So, final rating, 8 out of 10. Thank you for watching, YouTube, and please subscribe.